John, Sarah, it's great to have you with us this morning. Welcome back to City. Um, we look forward to hearing you preach for us in a few minutes, John. Um, but uh, Sarah, we, we just heard that you and John were, were founder members of City all the way back in 1999 and that you stayed with us through to, to 2008. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you were both doing during that time and, and perhaps uh, how you met Shy John? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I grew up in Birmingham and I went to university in Cardiff and then I returned to Birmingham because I'd got a job as a forensic scientist here. Um, so when, when sort of I met John, he was a student and um, I was sort of uh, working uh, in the city. Um, and yeah, just over time. Young professional, ice queen, <laughs> untouchable. <laughs> we didn't we didn't cross paths right to begin with and i didn't, I didn't even re, i don't think i remember even the first couple of years no. um but then he became a uh, ministry trainee and there was this sort of um quite quiet but quite funny guy that caught my eye and so um yeah we got to know each other a bit um shared group friends and that kind of thing and then um yeah we got together persuaded him to teach me the guitar and from there <laughs> <laughs> One thing led to another. It was a nasty trip, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so um, maybe, um, Sarah, tell us a bit about, um, your, you know, how your, your working life has, has kind of continued over the years and, and perhaps a bit about your family as well. Yeah, so, um, so I worked in forensics for about 12 years um, and then... Um, we had children so I had a break from it um, spent a little bit of time working with Sarah Mullen um, in Bournemouth Community Hub and now what I do is I teach forensics um, so I train up scientific apprentices um, and sort of specialise in training up the forensic uh, students so it's a bit of a steep learning curve the last couple of years sort of switching to teaching um, and I'm doing a diploma as well so I sort of work part-time um, two and a half days a week and I, I do a diploma room in, in sort of the spare time as well um, and at the moment it's three kids at home and trying to teach them as well so it's a bit full on at the moment um, yeah. but we're sort of hanging on in there <laughs> but yeah fantastic um, John can I can I ask you to kind of take us even further back and and maybe just tell us a little bit how you became a Christian yeah absolutely so I, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents are Christians and um, I'm absolutely sure that my mum uh, in particular would share the gospel with me as a, as a little boy. Um, I went to the local uh, Methodist chapel um, as well, where I was in the Sunday school. Um, if I hadn't been sent into the porch for being naughty, which used to happen quite regularly. Um, but actually, I, I don't remember hearing the gospel as a child. I'm sure that I did, but I don't remember it really at all. And then when my mum kind of said, look, do you, do you still want to go? You've got the option of not going. I was pretty reluctant. Uh, I think it was probably about, I was about 13. I just said, no, I'm not going anymore. And so I kind of consciously rejected things. But I think when I was about 15, 16, that sort of age, I had a bit of a kind of crisis, really. I mean, you know, so at, at that stage in terms of um, just be feeling disillusioned with my friendship groups and asking deeper questions, wanting answers, um, trying to figure out who I was, all of that really. And it was then that um, a friend of mine invited me to their church. And, and so I went along to the, the kind of Baptist church in the town in Scarborough and Ebenezer Baptist church. And, and it was there really that I began to li listen, actually had ears to hear, I think the gospel for the very first time. And they really took me under their wing as I kind of walked through the doors there were a number of older folk who just started praying for me um, and it, it's lovely and actually later when I was baptized they kind of came up to me and said you know we've been praying for you John uh, which was really amazing um, to hear when you're kind of 17 years old and um, and trying to trying to figure all this stuff out so that was really the moment I kind of came to faith I went on an alpha course and I just found myself week after week saying I believe this. I actually believe this. I think I'd kind of gone in part really to try and get the Christian faith out of my system. I'd, I'd kind of rejected it. 
I was having a bit of a crisis. I kind of thought maybe I just need to, this is a hang up of, of the past and I just need to kind of release myself from it. But actually um, it was really then that I encountered Jesus, you know, for myself personally, uh, placed my faith in him and, um, I, and became a Christian. I remember writing on my little questionnaire at the end of the Alpha course, I think I've become a Christian. And, uh, and a few days later, the, the, the pastor sort of phoning me up and saying, I've just read your question, John, you know, um, which was, which was lovely. And, and then pretty soon after that, I went to Birmingham, uh, as a student to the University of Birmingham. And it was there really, uh, in, in Birmingham that I first kind of encountered Bible teaching, um, and, and discipleship as well, you know, people willing to give me their time and and share Christ with me and help me to grow. Fantastic. Um, well, I know um, that, that as a church, John, we're looking forward to opportunities to, to get to know you um, a bit more, to hear from you, um, and also to ask you some questions over the next couple of weeks. Um, and those who are, who are connected to us um, will have already uh, received um, invitations to those to those meetings um, by email. Um, I know I'm also not alone in having been really inspired reading the covering letter that you wrote almost, well, getting on for a year ago now to the elders um, applying for the job of lead pastor. And I'd really encourage um, any of the members who haven't yet um, read that to um, to do so. But can I just ask you to say something now? Um, about um, what it is that excites you about the possibility of of pastoring City Church? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, it's very strange, isn't it, having to do all of this sort of electronically um, <laughs> over, over Zoom. And I, I know we all appreciate the limitations of that. But yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, Sarah and I talk about it. We are, we're really excited. Um, and there's a whole load of things that excite us. But I think the, the main thing, the big one, is the people. You know, as we've been getting to know people a little bit uh, obviously we know a handful of people at city already but also just as we kind of get to know the staff team and the elders and others who've begun to kind of say hi and all of that it really excites us i think this was the thing that motivated us in the very first instance was really uh, the people at city I, I think it's fair to say just that you know in, having been in ministry for 10 years I, I am basically a local church pastor that's who i am um, and we come to shepherd God's people uh, under God as best as we possibly can. And that's, that's my priority. And that is, that's the thing that excites me. I'm excited about that. I think secondly, I, you know, we've really sensed God's call through all of this. And uh, that's not to be presumptuous about any outcome at this stage. We appreciate there's a process to go through, but we're not, um, you know, this hasn't been about trying to run away from Crossway. We love Crossway dearly. It hasn't been about being persuaded by others. Actually, it's been a really internal <laughs> sense that this is what God is calling us to. And actually, that feels really exciting. It feels really exciting. Obviously, it has to be confirmed through an external call. And we, we you know, kind of await that decision. And that's fine. But I think it's exciting just that that's the way that it's gone. Um, and then I think thirdly, we're just really excited about the vision of City Church. We always have been. We're both a product of that. You know, we've been we've been we've trained been trained up disciples, sent out, um, and you know, in some ways, we've seen the blessings of the vision of City Church to be a resource city, uh, resource church for the city. Uh, we've been on the receiving end of that as well. You know, as as Crossway Church and our involvement with 2020 as well and so it's just exciting to kind of be be a part of that vision and to god willing you know play a part in strengthening that in a sustainable way in a way that means it's healthy for the whole church family but in a way that continues to really fulfill that that vision so yeah i could say much more i'm very excited <laughs> okay um so about after a decade at Crossway, 10 days ago, you shared the news um, that, that your City Church is preferred candidate for lead pastor with, with your church family there. And, uh, you know, as you know, we're now in a process leading up to um, a vote of City Church members. How can we 
um, pray for you as a family um, and also for Crossway Church, um, our sister sister church in, you know, at this time. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, for the church really, so yeah, we shared with them um, just last week and, you know, it was a shock for, for many, but interestingly already they're beginning to get excited at sort of, you know, sort of God being at the centre of it. Um, and, and so I just, yeah, I think pray for them as they adjust um, and they're, they're fully on board for um, Phil Swinburne, who came from the city as well, um, taking on the interim leadership for the church. So I think just pray for them as a congregation and pray for Phil and Laura yeah. as they're going to be sort of, um, you know, taking the lead role there. Um, yeah, I think um, pray for peace for them and uh, yeah, just a real confidence that God is the equipper and uh, yeah. yeah, that it's his church and it's God that, that builds it and grows it. So I think that's a big one. I think for for us as a family, we when we you know John applied back in November, I don't think we imagined lockdown, and so saying goodbye no. during lockdown is um is is quite hard. So I think just yeah. pray that those goodbyes would be um done well. I think despite sort of the circumstances that we're all in, um yeah, and uh, we love them dearly, and so it's just wanting to be able to sort of and well there really um and we've got three kids as i said um a girl who's 13 a boy ben who's 11 and a girl daisy who's um eight and for them city is a bit more of an unknown because um all they've known is crossway and, and love crossway so i think just pray for them um if if you wouldn't mind uh, just they're actually um although they were very sad at the thought of leaving crossway we're already seeing um, a lovely curiosity and uh, an excitement grow um, at the thought of moving on. But I think just pray that that would continue. And and if this is all God's will, my heart is that this will be such a, a blessing for them as kids um, in their faith and their journey. So, so yeah, I think that, that would be it mainly. Thank you. Quite a few things for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. John, John, Sarah, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Hugh now, who's going to um, lead us in prayer, including for, for some of those things. So, yeah, thank you again. And we look forward to hearing your sermon shortly, John. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.